discourse analysis or narrative analysis is a kind of qualitative research where we analyze text or some other human communication. Discourse is basically any kind of communication and narrative is basically like a, a description of events or a story. How, do these, how does this approach differ from grounded theory or multiple case studies? Let's take this grounded theory and uh, multiple case studies as a starting point. So these are our two templates that researchers like to follow. And they're basically sets of procedures starting from sampling to how you do interviews, to how you do analysis, to how you present the study results. So these are kind of like uh, recipes that you can follow to do your research. But these are not the only kinds of qualitative research or uh, ways of doing qualitative research that we apply in management research. There are also other ways. And uh, this book chapter by Langley and Abdallah explain that there are two other approaches, strategies practice and strategies discourse. These are not the same kind of recipes for doing research as those presented on the previous slide, but they are more about what we analyze and, and what we study. So the strategies of practice focuses on studying what people actually do when they do strategy. So instead of focusing on, on strategy as something that exists in the firm or something that the firm has, this approach views strategy as something that people do. The uh, strategy as a discourse idea is that uh, strategy is a, a way of communication and we analyze that communication. So uh, the idea of communication is that when we communicate something, that communication creates meaning for people. And uh, that communication shapes the actions of people. So in contrast to, to uh, grounded theory or multiple case studies, which either study a reality or per people's perception of reality through texts and through explanations in discourse analysis, we study the explanation or the communication itself. So if we interview a person or we, uh, if we analyze the document, we don't analyze that document to learn about what the document tells us about the reality or what the document tells us about the person's interpretation of reality. We analyze the document or we analyze the story based on what the story does. So for example, if we ask people to explain why a company failed, those narratives of failure could have been constructed by those, those people to rationalize the, the reasons for failure. So for example, a person might construct a narrative that the failure was external to the company and that avoids the uh, person feeling responsible for the failure themselves. So the focus here is, is not on understanding what the text tells about reality or what the text tells about a person's interpretation of reality, but what the text does. So uh, for example, uh, or quite commonly, an example in discourse analysis is political speech. So the, uh, the political speech, the purpose of political speech is, is not to tell about reality in as much as it's about uh, shaping public opinion. And we only can only understand the text within the context in which it is spoken. So uh, discourse refers to all forms of communication, written, spoken, could be images, any communication that people produce. And the idea is that discourse shapes the world. Symbols, text, and other things give meaning to us and shape our perceptions. And this is these perceptions are what discourse analysis study. For example, strategy, if it's a document, it helps people to make, uh, to structure the, uh, the world around them and it helps the organization, the people within the organization to coordinate their actions toward a common purpose. So I like this description of discourse, uh, discourse analysis by Sanders' book. And uh, she explains that uh, discourse analysis is a general term that covers many different approaches of making sense of text. So there is no, no one set of analysis techniques and tools that form discourse analysis, but there are multiple different techniques. In management research, there, there are not really that many templates that you could, fo could follow to do discourse analysis, 
but in linguistics where this approach originates there are a few structured approach but they're not very commonly used in management research so I will not talk about those. Another thing that um, this book explains is the critical discourse analysis. This is one variant of discourse analysis and the idea of critical discourse analysis or critical studies more generally is to analyze the, the, the discourse to point uh, some problems in, in the current discourse. For example, if we have uh, movies where uh, police are always white people and the bad guys are always black people, that's a pretty racist discourse. And if we point out that that actually uh, emphasizes the racial stereotypes and increases the racism in the society, then our study would be a critical would be a, a critical discourse analysis study. So the idea in a critical study is that you analyze the discourse and you point out some unwanted consequences of the current discourse or some problems with the current discourse and then you try to change the society through that way. The discourse analysis always considers text and text is a part of a broader discourse. So text, uh, we have uh, speech, we have figures, so quite often text is a, uh, just a part of the discourse. And discourse always needs to underst be understood within the social context. So the meaning of language changes over time and the meaning of certain words changes depending on the context. So we, we cannot understand texts without understanding the context in which they were produced in. A typical example of that we commonly use when teaching discourse analysis in social studies more generally is the interpretation of Bible. And uh, the interpretation of Bible can only be done by understanding the, the context in which those texts were written uh, hundreds of years ago. Let's take a look at examples of what, di what the discourse analysis might ask. So uh, a discourse analyst might ask what are the dominant discourses in the context. For example, if we study company failure, what are the ways that people explain the failure? There might be some dominant narratives that emerge. For example, uh, one group of people could explain that the failure of a company was because of external situation, uh, circumstances. And another group of people could say that the failure was because of the management failed to act. Another group of people would s could say that the failure was just pure luck and or poor luck. We also need to understand what is the purpose that each discourse serves. If you are a line worker and you um, attribute the failure to the management of the company, then the purpose of that discourse is to shift to the blame away from you. So it's not you who are to blame, it is the top management. The top management could also have the, uh, the narrative that the failure was due to external causes and that shifts the blame away from them. We also need to understand uh, for each text fragment, who is saying, what are they saying, when are they saying, where are they saying, why are they saying something and how. To understand these questions, consider this text fragment. What's up? What's the meaning of what's up? It depends on the context. It could be that you're meeting somebody and you're asking, uh, how are they doing? So that's kind of like a greeting. Or it could be understood as a question about the direction and whether it's a question about the direction or what is the meaning of the term up or whether it's a greeting depends entirely on in which context these two words are spoken. Narrative analysis is sometimes combined with grounded theory and there's a good article by Fairhorst and Putnam on how to actually do this. So because discourse analysis and narrative analysis don't really provide a, a template that people could follow, this is quite often combined with uh, the grounded theory kind of coding. And there are actually uh, similarities, but there are also some differences between these two approaches. The most important difference is that whereas in grounded theory, the, the language or text or interview that we are analyzing is used to make sense of a person's interpretations of, of reality, or if we have the realist approach, we use those texts and interviews to make sense of the reality itself. Here in uh, discourse analysis, 
we are more focused on, on why are people communicating the way uh, they are and, and what is the communication doing. So instead of looking at a text as, as data, we look at the text as the subject of our study. And that's the key point in narrative and discourse analysis.